What's up Internet? Infinitely Galactic here with another Linux distro review and today we are looking at the second biggest release of the last couple of months and that of course would be Linux Mint 13. Now Linux Mint has been an interesting distribution and it's had a very interesting history of the past year. Uh, you can see that uh, by DistroWatch's rankings that it has uh, it has topped Ubuntu on multiple occasions as far as the hits on its DistroWatch page. Of course that's not really an indicator of how popular the distribution is over Ubuntu, but having said that, Ubuntu and Linux Mint do share a lot in common, at least the target of their user base. Canonical, the company behind Ubuntu, has taken Ubuntu in its own specific direction, and with 12.04 we've really seen Ubuntu come of its own as far as maturity and its age is concerned, with its whole Unity desktop experience. And now Linux Mint has got a beast of its own, and that is Cinnamon. Uh, on top of Cinnamon they also have Mate, which is not really that new because it's just a, a fork of GNOME 2 that is just keeping the old user uh, experience around for those who still want to use it. Having said that, the new hotness is definitely the Cinnamon desktop. So that is the addition we are going to look at today. And I can definitely see that Linux Mint is a lot neater, a lot tidier, and a lot more coherent in this release as opposed to the last release which was of course uh, Linux Mint 12 with the Mint GNOME shell extensions. Kind of a halfway release between trying to juggle uh, GNOME 3 as well as trying to keep the traditional Mint uh, user experience. Having said that, they've really managed to pull it together with this release. Of course, it is long-term support, so they would want to have it together by then. So let's see what Linux Mint has to offer in this edition. Number 13, codenamed Maya. Okay, so here we are at the Linux Mint Login Manager, which, of course, by the way, is new. So we just throw in our username and password, if indeed we can type it fast enough. And then you can see that it's basically, uh, it's ba it basically code-wise is based on the same uh, as the as the uh, GDM2, uh, but obviously they've done a bit of theming and that's one of the things that they wanted to implement in this login manager. They wanted the ability to be able to theme it and so they've built that in quite nicely as well. You can see you've got the language settings there, you've got your session, and then of course you've got actions if you want to shut the computer down, etc. So let's log in and you can hear we've got the classic Linux Mint jingle there. And unfortunately one thing I have noticed is it does take a little bit to log in sometimes. And here we are in the Cinnamon 1.4 desktop. Now, Cinnamon is a very nice user experience. It's very, it's very dark, it's very swish, it's very gray. Uh, the icons uh, complement it quite nicely and it's obviously the icon set they've been working with for some time. So I'm actually gonna talk about look and feel first up this time around. So it's not something I've been doing that often. You can see here that it clearly is uh, very much GNOME 3, but the Cinnamon shell, which is basically the user experience built on top of it, caters to the traditional user uh, and does not at all throw any wacky uh, window management or user paradigm changes in uh, in the user's face. Cinnamon does use the same core technologies that GNOME 3 uses, so you're not going to be left behind technologically. You can see with the wallpapers here, we've got a beautiful selection of wallpapers, and uh, again, the Mint team have traditionally stuck to very green wallpapers, but this time around, they've actually varied it up quite a bit. They've got some very nice photos in here of all kinds of different locations, and, uh, and good on them for providing such quality wallpapers with this release. As, uh, to be honest, it has been a bit of a sticking point in previous releases as they've only released uh, branded uh, wallpapers. So this, uh, so this release is looking very nice indeed. As you can see, the window effects do work quite smoothly as well, and this all boils down to the cinnamon settings, which I have looked at before, and I'm just going to spend a bit more time looking at them today. You can see just quickly here at the mint menu, which of course is specific to cinnamon now. Uh, it was it was it was initially developed for the mint gnome shell extensions release of mint 12, but as you can see, it's undergone a bit of work, and it's very uh, smooth and fluid, and you can easily add icons to your panel, to your desktop, or to your favorites uh, without much fuss there at all. And you can see. I've added Thunderbird to my panel down the bottom here and it all works very smoothly. Uh, the only other functionality I would like to see built in would be to install applications uh, from the menu like you could with the previous Mint menu. But apart from that, uh, much of the functionality has been retained uh, between the Linux Mint 11 and Linux Mint 13 releases. As far as default applications are concerned, we're going to come back to those in a bit because right now I want to talk about the Cinnamon settings. 
Now cinnamon settings is just like a control panel to control your user experience to the way you like it. And you can see here that you've got um, settings for the panel and some of these settings I have discussed in the Linux Mint Debian review as well as uh, cinnamon 1.3 that I had a look at a few months back. And you can see you can customize nearly every element of the workspace that you're working with which is pretty handy as it's not as customization to this degree. It's pretty hard to come by in modern Linux desktop environments. You've got a few hot corner settings here as well for your window management as you can see here. It does an expo effect along with the uh, two desktops and you can dynamically add more or less as you need to. Theming is also very nice. You can see here that we've got uh, added quite a number of themes in here by default which is extremely nice to see. Uh, as we've got uh, a few themes here based off the Android 4.0. We've got a lot of great themes from their website as well as you can change the uh, themes for both the environment settings and also for the icons for the cursors, the GTK themes, the whole, the whole kit and caboodle. And so this is very, very nice. So you can see here if I change the theme to elementary OS, you can see that the shell, the, uh, the cinnamon shell has changed settings. If I change it to ice cream sandwich, it does the same again and you can see the settings now look very ice cream sandwichy. And then if I go to the icon themes, you can see we've got a we've got a limited amount of icons with just the Mint X and then the same with the GTK themes. Having said that, you are able to go out and download uh, new GTK themes along with uh, to go with your cinnamon desktop. So we're going to change back to cinnamon for the time being and by default it's the ambience mint. Moving on to effects and you can see here again you can customize the closing, mapping, minimizing, maximizing and unmaximizing of all your windows uh, down to the milliseconds and what sort of effects you want them to do. Default is usually dandy for me uh, and I don't usually generally go too crazy with the effects but you never know. Applets, you can see here this is, this is restoring a lot of the functionality that was lost with the GNOME 2 applet, so it's very, very nice in that regard. Uh, you can easily add these to the panel uh, to you know expand the panel's functionality. So for instance, I can tick recent documents and you can see the recent documents pops up down the bottom here. And because of the fact I haven't actually done anything on this system yet, it doesn't have any recent documents. You can also have the workspace switcher like you had in previous releases where you can jump between the two workspaces, which is very nice. And again, quick links to add new applets from the cinnamonspices.linuxmint.com site. Moving right along to extensions. And again, extensions do what they say on the tin and you can go straight to the website and pull up more extensions very easily. Desktop settings, you can easily uh, switch on network services, what sort of icons you want showing up on the desktop. Desktop. It kind of doubles the functionality that uh, Mint Desktop does, uh, which you can see here is not actually available anymore through the default Linux Mint in installation, so I can see why. And then of course you've got the windows where you can customize the location of the buttons and all of that. And then of course you've got fonts where you can choose the text scaling factors and all the default fonts for your system, as well as the font smoothing, etc. Also, the panel now has the ability to move the uh, uh, icons around on the panel. So you can see here, if I go to panel settings, it will bring up the mint settings panel control like I showed you before. And then you can also edit the, uh, you can add remove the applets. And then of course you can turn the panel edit mode on. Now, as you can see, it highlights all of your icons in different colors, including your quick launch icons then your notification applets, and then your update manager, time and date, and all of that. Then you can drag it around on the panel to your heart's content. You can get your panel looking exactly the way you want, which is a very nice touch, as you, you really can't do this with the GNOME 3 panel. Then once you're finished, you simply switch that mode off again, and it is concrete, and you can't mess around with it from there. So very nice touch. So that's just the cinnamon settings, and that's very, very nice indeed. Uh, by the way, it, this release does look quite nice. I, I feel like I need to stress that quite a bit, because uh, in, the, in the past, I haven't been that impressed with Linux Mint's uh, look ever since about Linux Mint 10-ish, I think was probably the last release that I really like the look of. This one's looking very nice indeed by default. So let's quickly run through applications here. Accessories, basic GNOME stuff along with Tomboy Notes because they're not afraid to include the mono libraries in here. Tomboy Notes is a fantastic application as I've mentioned before. Under graphics, you've got the document viewer GIMP of course which unfortunately I'd say is only going to be running at 2.6 as opposed to the 2.8 version which is available for download via PPA. So as you can see the first time I'm running it, it is a little slow to start up. But they really should get the GIMP 2.8 into the official Ubuntu repos as soon as possible. By the way, if I didn't mention, Linux Mint it does run off Ubuntu's repositories for most of its software. However, the Mint specific tools and the uh, Cinnamon desktop environment do come from the Linux Mint servers, which have been gradually expanding with their own uh, custom selection of software. Gthumb they have for their image viewer 
and manager. You've also got LibreOffice Draw and Simple Scan. Then you've got the internet applications, including the Mozilla Suite, Transmission, XChat, IRC, Pigeon for your instant messaging as opposed to Empathy. Pigeon is a very nice application that most uh, that most uh, instant messaging users are familiar with as it is available on both Mac and Windows. Under Office, basic LibreOffice there with the document viewer, sound and video, VLC, sound recorder, uh, movie player, no mem player, basically the traditional Linux Mint applications with the inclusion of Banshee as your default music manager. Uh, which is an interesting inclusion. Again, they're not afraid of mono, so they're not trying to avoid that. By the way, this, this ISO is 800 megs, so it's not a huge download, and you do get a decent software uh, selection here just for those 800 megs. Moving along to system tools, you've got, of course, the basic GNOME stuff again, along with the system settings, which is where you're gonna be changing most of your GNOME settings. And here, of course, we get the privacy settings that have been passed down from Ubuntu. You get your online accounts, language support, keyboard layout, and all that fun stuff. Uh, broken down into personal hardware and system. One comment that I would make is that the little icons here that Ubuntu traditionally have uh, in their icon set do not show up here in Mint 13, so it does look a little bit ugly having those no icons available signs. But again, this is an RC release, so it might not be the final version, uh, but there's not gonna be too much change between this RC and the final release of Linux Mint. Again, filtered search here to find what you're looking for. It's all very simply categorized and perfect for the new user. Preferences, again, we've got a lot of custom Mint tools here, uh, such as the backup tool, which uh, effectively backs up your home folder and whatever other stuff that you might want to back up, including your applications list software selection, etc. So that's very nice. It would be good to see them tie this into some sort of online storage because that has already been very successfully implemented, implemented via Ubuntu One. They don't necessarily have to use Ubuntu One, but at least another online backup service would be helpful. But again, Mint Backup Tool has been around for a little while and it works quite well. One thing that I would comment on with this menu is that there is a little bit of confusion between the preferences and the administration folder. While most of the settings in administration folder do require you to put in your root password, it, it, it doesn't seem that clear, at least to me, uh, the distinction between some of these preferences and the administration folder. I'm just throwing that out there, it's just personal opinion. Back to preferences, of course, you got all of the other GNOME stuff that was listed uh, in and amongst the uh, in and amongst the system settings. And then, of course, bumping over to administration, you have the Mint Update Manager, which is, of course, a very well-known update tool that I've complimented several times, so there's no need to open it this time. You can have a look at the previous videos because it does the job and it does it well. Upload Manager, again, custom Mint tool. And the Windows wireless drivers, a good inclusion for any of those wireless cards that aren't supported out of the box by Linux Mint, which are not that many, to be honest. Uh, hardware compatibility with Linux Mint is, of course, on par with Ubuntu 12.04, Performance-wise, I haven't noticed any lag apart from there's a slight wait between the time where you want to log in and logging out again. Um, but apart from that, it all performs very nicely and I haven't really noticed any real lag. Again, with open windows and managing your desktop, this operating system does work very nicely. You can also notice that they've uh, taken away the quotes from the terminal that have been quite legendary over the past couple of releases, but of course it is easily enabled uh, via their Linux Mint repositories as well. Let's talk quickly about the software center before wrapping up this review of Linux Mint 13. Now the Software Center, of course, is their own custom Mint software manager uh, that is not at all tied to the Ubuntu Software Center. So there's not any paid applications available in here, but they do do a nice job of categorizing their applications, presenting some nice icons and user ratings here and reviews to uh, find your commonly used applications and their featured apps list is not afraid to show the uh, proprietary applications that most Windows users are gonna be familiar with, including you can see Adobe Reader, Dropbox, Skype, and uh, Google Earth, things of that nature. The software manager does work quite nicely. And again, unfortunately, because of the proxy server that I'm sitting behind, it doesn't work entirely the way it's supposed to, but it, it gets the job done and I can still install software from it. Having said that, it would be great to see a few more filtering results here as uh, as it is quite a cluttered mess of software, especially with the libraries included in with the main applications. So it would be good to see a bit more categorization when it comes to the actual applications versus the libraries and just extra packages that you need to install for these apps to work. But at the end of the day, uh, most users are gonna be learning how to use this software and learning which applications are available through their immense community and forum that backs Linux Mint. 
And that is of course of their search engine. Uh, recently Linux Mint have been able to partner with Yahoo, which is the second biggest uh, search engine on the planet besides Google. Anybody heard of it? I personally haven't, joke, joke. Anyway, you can see here that with the Linux Mint branding, uh, this actually pr proves to be quite a nice search engine uh, compared to what they had in the past, which was a pretty shoddy Google uh, implementation. So you can see here, searching for my own uh, vein name, I've got uh, web images and video. And thankfully, most of my uh, most of my videos do show up, so that's that's comforting. So Yahoo does do quite a nice job of searching the web, and uh, coupled with the Linux Mint release, it does quite a nice job. But you can see when I come back to the homepage after skimming around, it does reset to Yahoo 7. Having said that, if it's a way to support the Linux Mint team without really thinking about it, then it's a good option. So I think Linux Mint 13 has definitely hit the ball out of the ballpark uh, with this release for the new user. I think if you're definitely, if you're looking to try out Linux for the first time as a Windows user, then definitely give Linux Mint 13 a go uh, as it's looking like a very real uh, alternative to Windows 7 and Windows 8. It's not quite as futuristic in its vision as what Ubuntu 12.04 is. Therefore, for me personally, uh, I am definitely gonna be installing Linux Mint 13 on my desktop computer, but, uh, but Ubuntu 12.04 is definitely staying on my laptop as I do very much appreciate the work that uh, that Ubuntu put into Unity with this time around. But with Linux Mint uh, 13, you're really not left in the dark here at all. They've really done a great job in polishing up this release, uh, making it ready for the long-term support. And I would happily recommend this to a new user as you've got all of the codecs and most software that you would want out of the box ready to go. Again, you don't like anything from the performance side of things. You also have the option to choose from the GNOME 2 fork, which is of course Mate, if you want uh, your unaltered GNOME 2 experience. But if you are ready to embrace the future and the future is quite simplistic, uh, then definitely have a look at the Cinnamon Edition as this release uh, definitely brings the simplicity of GNOME 3 along with the customizations that uh, that the Cinnamon desktop have made to make it a very easy user experience to get used to, especially for the Windows user. So congratulations on the Linux Mint team for such a wonderful long-term support release. I'm definitely gonna be more than happy recommending this to new users. And I think the Mint user base should be proud of what uh, Clement and the team have put out this year. So all of you Isadora users from 2010, I think it's time to upgrade because Linux Mint 13 really does bring compelling operating system them to the table that's very futuristic in its technologies but it's a very traditional user experience it's going to be easy to get used to all right so let me know of what you think about linux mint in the comments below and i'm also going to do a quick experiment as far as which desktop environment you're going to use obviously linux mint 13 comes in those two editions cinnamon and mate what I'm going to do is I'm going to leave comments in the video down below that hopefully they'll be the first comments there and you need to thumb up the edition that you are going to be using, either the Cinnamon or the Mate desktop. Also let me know in the comments below, would you use this over the Linux Mint Debian edition which I reviewed a couple weeks back. Once again, thank you for watching, clickety clack the like button, subscribe or whatever it is you like to do when you like this kind of content and I shall be back again very soon with another app review and more distro reviews to come. Also I will get around to that Android 4.0 review at some stage. Thank you all for watching. And and I shall catch you next time. Peace out, ladies and gentlemen.